Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. Good morning. This is the Acquia podcast and now with video. The Acquia podcast is where we talk about Drupal technology community and business. Today I'm talking with a good friend of mine, Tim Deason, the managing director of Deason Online, a digital agency in the UK. Good morning, Tim. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. For Monday morning, I'm good. Can you tell us a little bit about your first Drupal memory, or maybe how you discovered Drupal and got into doing what you do now? Yeah, so I'd, uh, I'd started uh, Decent Online in about uh, 2001, and it was part of a, a business that my grandfather had started originally, actually, in 1956. Uh, there was a communications agency. My dad had started a contact publishing um, company in the 80s, and uh, in 2001, uh, some clients had started asking for websites. I just got back from uh, traveling, and I'd always always been a programmer and kind of fascinated by technology, and I kind of thought, okay, great, well, I can make a website. Um, we did that for about five years or so, um, uh, doing bespoke PHP uh, uh, kind of builds, and I realized that something kind of writing another login script, building this stuff all from scratch just felt wrong. I, you know, deep down I knew something wasn't right, that we were kind of carrying on it, reinventing all of these wheels. And um, we, in about kind of 2007, we started looking around and saying, you know, what, there must be a platform that we can kind of piggyback on. And I'd always use the phrase of kind of, which I'm sure I've stolen from someone about, uh, standing on the shoulders of giants, like let's do the fun, interesting stuff that adds value for customers, let's not keep kind of reinventing kind of really basic stuff. And we audited kind of commercial platforms, open source platforms, we were kind of completely deliberately technology and license agnostic, and we were looking at the overall benefits of what does what does open source mean in this kind of particular tech, you know, if we were going to use an open source CMS, what would a, a licensed CMS mean? And after kind of through about a three month audit process, we settled on uh, Drupal, and um, I think we were probably about kind of three or four people. I started decent online with a designer, uh, just the two of us, and we were probably kind of three or four people at that stage. And what was the deciding factor that made you settle on Drupal at the time? And what version of Drupal was that? That was Drupal 5. So um, I think it was towards the end of uh, mid to end of Drupal 5. Um, so we we were looking for um, flexibility and control, like we wanted to be able to learn and do things ourselves. We didn't want to be kind of stuck into someone else's licensing model where we were just reselling kind of packaged features that we didn't have any control over. Um, we wanted something that would really um, give us the kind of the power and the flexibility to grow as a company and not be kind of restricted by um, another company's roadmap or um, always have to be kind of fighting to um, be how big is this partner, for example, um, and it gave us that kind of freedom and independence to um, to do that. And also, it looked like we were starting to get asked for more and more complex digital publishing builds. And most of the CMSs out there were really kind of, you know, um, over-engineered kind of blogging platforms where we recognised with Drupal, like you can really do anything. Like it's got that framework kind of angle to it, where we felt that we weren't just going to bottom it out, kind of three builds in if we grew a bit and started having larger clients, that it wasn't going to be something that was just going to be, we were going to bump our head on its kind of functional ceiling really quickly. So can you compare Drupal 5 to Drupal now and where Drupal's going with the next release? Yeah, so, I mean, we started to do some kind of large client work around the end of Drupal 5 um, for kind of a national broadcaster in the UK and really... Um, what the guys did with Pressflow and Drupal 6. Like Drupal 5 and Drupal 6 we found were really immature for scalability. Um, so Drupal 6 added the kind of the Pressflow kind of fork which allowed it, um, allowed people to um, modify core to kind of take out some of the really kind of heavy bottlenecks and Drupal 7 kind of brought those in um, as, a, uh, as a kind of a standard way of doing things. Um, that was probably kind of the back-end administration space and the flexibility of, of things like CCK going in. Um, to fields in seven from five and six meant that I think we spent less time on the basics and again we're spending more time on the kind of powerful complex stuff. So the trend from your agency perspective is to giving you more and more power and more and more repeatability with less work along the way from you know the scalability that came with press flow through all the way through to this uh, uh, um, 
configuration and code and the um, content staging initiatives and stuff that are coming in Drupal 8? Yeah, and it means, I mean, we've also grown as a company from um, working with very few clients and relatively small kind of in when we first started using Drupal to working with multinational companies, um, companies that, uh, you know, uh, they're deploying these platforms that we build to, you know, millions of people in some cases, and it means that the, the, the quality and the processes need to kind of carry on ramping up, and I think we've been really lucky that Drupal being kind of pushed by demand and by opportunity has, has really kind of been going into that enterprise space in a strong way, and we've been able to grow with it and been able to recruit um, people at the kind of the top of their technical and engineering game and make sure we're uh, providing them and utilizing a platform that has the sophistication to say actually we're kind of, you know, aiming to be best of breed at how these kind of problems are solved. Because they're problems that all CMSs and, and software generally kind of has, and it's been interesting to see how the community um, has kind of stepped up and been so keen to um, to address them and to kind of carry on pushing them forward because they're not just click your finger easy wins. It's not be good. They are complex kind of gnarly problems. Okay, so as things stand, what's your very favorite thing about Drupal? Uh, I think I think the kind of the the obvious one, but the the genuinely true one is the the community stuff. I mean, there's genuinely people. We, you know, we have new hires and we introduce them to Drupal, and they just genuinely are shocked at Drupal cons that this isn't this isn't a trade show. This isn't some kind of you know sales led you know um, very corporate kind of feeling thing. They say, how can this be at the scale but not have the kind of classic problems of of um, why isn't this big kind of shiny software stuff? What should other people know about Drupal? Um, I think I think knowing that it's kind of a tool for a job and it shouldn't, you know, when we talk to clients, I mean, a few years ago we had to kind of do the whole, you know, fear, uncertainty, and doubt kind of fun stuff when people spoke about open source. And now people are coming to us who, you know, five years ago when we were using Drupal five, we had to tell people this is why the open source is safe. This is what Drupal is safe. You know, going through those classic kind of open source um, fun things and. And now, really, um, occasionally we have that conversation, but much more often people are recognizing the kind of the benefits of Drupal and, and knowing that it is kind of a complex, powerful um, platform that can do anything. And I think you know Drupal still has that sales and marketing job of going out there to educate people about um, what it's good at, what it's capable of, and where very kind of um, commercial, feature-driven CMSs often have like great live demos and great showcases. And I think you know the challenge for us is is getting away from the kind of saying Drupal can do anything to the end user isn't really that helpful because actually they want to know what it can do for them. And I think we, as a community, have still got that, that challenge ahead of us to make sure that we're demonstrating how great it is and not just kind of telling them they can do anything because that's actually just scary and um, <laughs> not very specific. I'm interested to know when you talk with digital agency colleagues, people with businesses similar to yours, how do you talk with them about being an open source business, and how do you talk about Drupal in in the context of your success as an agency? Yeah, I mean, I think we were we were really lucky in our selection and timing of Drupal. We we were kind of there when it started to ascend, and I think it was we were lucky that our judgment was the the same choices that we were making. The kind of the wider market was recognizing Drupal recognizing Drupal at the same time. I think. Uh, what I've seen from large agencies and network agencies is really that they're being market-led, so they're seeing uh, people succeed with Drupal and they're having clients specify Drupal. Um, they and then they're really starting to ask questions about um, what does this mean and and how will it work for us. And I think they, um, with the kind of large commercial uh, enterprise CMSs, I think people have often they they're used to being led by one kind of um, provider and having that kind of structure where the Drupal community is a much more kind of complex. There's no single point of contact. There's no kind of, you know, sales rep necessarily who's just going to tell you how to do everything. And that's that's a great strength in the diversity there. But I think the digital agencies I've spoken to um, definitely it takes and it does. You know, Drupal is a complex thing, and open source to properly understand it is a kind of complex concept. And I think they they kind of they slowly kind of drip drip get it, and then often they're led by a, a project that a client specified Drupal for. And they kind of say, oh, well, we've got the kind of PHP developers. We'll just, you know, we'll just call it a Drupal development team. And then they have that learning curve of, you know, Drupal is a framework and a platform on top of everything else. And you really need to understand that. And there isn't just a kind of click your fingers, I've got a magic Drupal team um, thing. And then the, the good ones and the ones who are really committed then go through that kind of process of how do they get that real knowledge and understanding in-house. And the bad ones tend to kind of dip in and out and um, can't properly embrace it, I guess. Hmm. So do you do some mentoring or, or evangelism in 
with with your colleagues around this kind of thing? Do you show them the Drupal way, or do you do you talk about the the value that open source brings to your business? We we're kind of you know relatively well connected, I guess, within the kind of the digital agency community in the UK generally. So on an informal basis, um, we've had lots of conversations with people who are kind of um, been asking around and being involved with things like Drupal Camp London. Um, people start to kind of say. Oh, well, that's kind of interesting. You have like a you know a 400 person event over three days in London uh, just about Drupal. There must be something kind of going on there, and people I think are more and more aware and, and starting to ask more and more questions. Um, on a commercial basis, it's just kind of a slightly agency to agency. There's always that slight kind of competitor angle where people are kind of protective and sensitive. Um, you know, but to me, I never really worry about that kind of thing because anyone can download Drupal. The knowledge is all out there. Like either you have those. Kind of as a as an agency, you're going to either have the kind of requisite skill set and approach that will mean you'll succeed with it, or or if you know if you or you won't. There's not really sure. kind of a secret source that says, oh, you know, we can't tell you what color we paint our light switches. So I feel when we come and eat our lunch, that's not something that worries me. <laughs> Someone I respect a lot uh, told me just the other week, you know, the idea that you have counts about this much, um, but the execution. Exactly. Uh, the ability to execute on any given idea is what makes is is what will differentiate you from everyone else, and that fits so well with how we think about um, ideas in open source. Actually, someone else I respect a lot, Shannon Vedis uh, from Commerce Guys, said one time, "Oh, these are not my ideas; they're just ideas." And I I love that quote. Yeah, yeah, and that's, it's so so true. Your ability to execute with Drupal, you know. Drupal has kind of successes and failures like any technology and platform. And if you look, there, but they all have the same common agreement. Everyone's downloaded core. Like none of the bits you protect are the, the tough bits. You know, Drupal is just software. To make a successful kind of complex project has so many soft issues around it as well. That you know, and that's I think the community is starting to gear up with some of those soft issues of how do we make Drupal the, the benefits visible to different people, for example. Okay, so to close out, why don't you give us your shameless plug? I guess I've got two shameless plugs actually. Uh, so one is um, we're always as decent online. We're you know we're always really really happy to share our knowledge, expertise, experiences, anything. So always come and talk to us. Um, we help competitors, clients, uh, people in the street, you name it. Come and ask us a, a Drupal question or a how do I get digital done well kind of question. Um, Drupal Camp London uh, is also happening next year. Um, there's a group of people uh, organising it. We're starting to get the dates and the venue and everything sorted out. So. Uh, we sold out last time. We we're adding more capacity, but if you're um, if you're interested, then uh, follow on Twitter and stuff, and uh, make sure you're kind of keeping up to date because um, we'll probably sell out again. And it was an amazing event. All right, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with me today. No, thank you.